So some of you guys know I started a vending machine business almost two years ago and I haven't made a video of why I quit and you might be wondering why I quit my vending machine business. Was it because the machines were heavy? Was it because of all the money I lost in expired products? Was it because I got sick and tired of moving those machines? <laughs> well, several reasons. But in this video, I'm going to tell you the pros and cons of starting and having a vending machine business from my experience. I'm going to tell you why I quit and what I did with the machines. And I know what you're thinking. Thinking, Reyes, you're a quitter, man. Relax, all right, relax. Hell yeah, I quit. I quit the vending machine business. But look, I did the vending machine business for a year and a half. I started with small candy machines, also known as bulk candy machines. I grew that to 25 locations, and then I made the jump to full line machines. I invested thousands of dollars. And then I decided, you know what? Maybe this isn't for me. I know I quit, but I gave it a shot. Well, I'm not allowed to try and quit things. I thought it was America. This isn't America. I thought I could do whatever I want here. Land of the free 99. And I just want to let you know, I documented the whole journey from me picking up my first two machines to me breaking my back, trying to move the machines to me just gaining the weight of all the products I ate. You know, check it in the description below, but I'm going to recap it just really quickly, all right? So keep up. It was a chill October afternoon, and I wanted to start a new business, and I was thinking, hmm, what's something low cost and something that I could start quick? Only fans wasn't available back then, so I needed the second best thing, and that was candy machine. The person who really gave me the idea was the homie Mike, from Chrome Vending. Hey, you remember Mike? Yeah, he's still around somewhere. And he told me the best way to get your feet wet is by starting you. So I went on Craigslist, found somebody who was selling two used candy machines, and I got them. And here's the thing about buying used. There's always something wrong with them. Something's broken or something you have to replace. And sure enough, these candy machines didn't have locks. So I went full on Bob the Builder on the candy machines, took them apart, cleaned them, and got them ready. But the hard part, finding locations. Luckily, I knew a few people with hair salons because, well, my sister used to work there. And I asked them if I could place my machines there, and they said, yeah. And the only thing left to do is wait and count my millions in 30 days. Well, after the first 30 days, I went to collect, and guess how much money I made? I made $119, but raise what about the profits? I made $79 profit, and here's the first pro. Pro number one, it isn't 100% passive income because you do have to restock them, clean them, fix them, but I only checked up on the machines once a month, and I made an extra $80 for two hours of work? Yo, is this even legal? And not bad, right? But that takes me to my first con. Con number one, getting locations is hard, man. I got lucky with my first few locations because I actually knew the owners. But when I got more machines, rejection was one of the hardest things you have to get over. For every 10 businesses you ask, you're probably gonna get two maybes. And every now and then, you're gonna get one yes. But the biggest reason most people are successful is because they're persistent. Let me tell you, nobody, nobody likes getting rejected. And it doesn't get easier. Like me, I still get nervous to this day. It doesn't get easier, you just get better at dealing with it. So that's what I did. I just kept asking people and little by little I got more locations, making more revenue. But you know what really took my candy machine business to the next level? When I bought a route. Someone was selling a whole route in my town. Now I have about 25 locations and 35 machines and guess how much money I was making a month? $300. 
But of course, after including the cost of the products, paying commissions, and you can't forget about the gas, I made a profit of $172 in a month. And you might be thinking, but Reyes, if three machines made you $79 profit, how is it possible that 25 machines only made you $172 profit? And this takes me to con number those. How much money you make depends completely on the location. Do they have a lot of employees? Or do they have a lot of customers? Two spots that always make good money are hair salons and Mexican restaurants. Do you agree with that? But some locations will only make me about 75 cents. Sometimes it wouldn't even be worth the gas to collect. That's one thing I found out. If someone is selling a route, find out why they're selling it. The guy who sold me the route told me he's selling it because uh, it's too far. But what that really meant was it's too far because it wasn't worth the drive. I got bamboozled. But you know what, it is what it is. I have a lot of locations, but at this point, I feel like I grew the candy machine, the bulk candy machine business to its full potential. And I was ready for my next challenge. And that was getting into the full line machines, the snack and soda vending machines. And once again, I went the used route. And once again, I had huge headaches. Bought two used machines off Craigslist, one soda and one snack, and I spent $1,500. I checked them, they turned on, but when I took them home, I found that the soda machine had huge problems. And I was done. That was it. I told myself, I'm never buying used again. The next best thing was I decided to buy refurbished on eBay, and I loved it. The machine was in full working condition and had warranty, but of course, they weren't cheap, about $1,500 for just one. But hey, they worked. I did the same thing I did with the candy machine business to get locations. I made flyers and just went to go ask until I got a yes. My girl even helped me get my first location. It was a tow shop and they wanted both soda and snack machines. And this takes me to pro number two. I'll be honest, there is way more money with the full line machines, but the same con applies. It all depends on the location. I was actually losing a lot of money because I would stock up the machines, but because they had very few employees and low walking traffic, a lot of products went bad. Now, here's what I should have done. I should have figured out which locations I wanted first, and I recommend packing houses. I should have got that location before I got the machine. And the reason is because of con number three. But before I tell you the next con, if you want more vending machine content in your life, my homie, the young entrepreneur, has been starting and growing his own candy machine business and he's documenting the process. He's been supporting me for a long time and I just want to return the favor. So if you could do me a favor, and go subscribe to his channel. Check out his content because he's giving out nothing but free 99 knowledge and not only about the vending machine business, but he's also trying different ways of making money. And I remember I was talking to him and I told him, hey, for your birthday, I'm gonna try getting you to 2,000 subscribers. And he goes, nah, Reyes, you are? And I'm like, I got you. So if you wanna help me, reach the 2,000 subscriber goal. Link in the description below. Go show him some love. Go check out his content. He's a really cool guy. But now, let me tell you con number three. The full line vending machine business is not passive income. Unlike checking the candy machine business once a month, you have to check your full line machines at least once every two weeks. And that's if you have a slow location. If you have a busy location, you're gonna have to restock your machine about two times a week. And here's some huge headaches you're gonna encounter that nobody really talks about. Number one, the machines are heavy and hard to move. Like I mentioned before, the easiest way to move your machine to a location is by getting the location first and then having the vending machine company ship it to that location. The second way to move a vending machine is with a pallet jack, which 
is about $300 to $1,000 on Amazon, but I'm like, no, no, I'm not gonna invest that much money just to move a machine. So the next best thing is getting a dolly that's heavy duty with the little extra wheels on the back. I used that and it did the job and it was way cheaper. Now, the last option, which is the cheapest, but the hardest is getting two or three homies and just moving it with your huevitos. You know, you just gotta shimmy it. Oh man, I remember man, moving that machine. I'm trying to lift it. I could feel my back. And that's when I realized, this is how I'm going out. Moving a vending machine, man. Let me tell you about another headache. Those texts or phone calls that your machine is eating dollars or that it's not working or that a bag of chips got stuck or that it's breaking up marriages. I'm like, bro, whoa, 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 whoa. You sure it's my vending machine? Not only is that a huge inconvenience, but I mean, you gotta figure stuff out on the spot. You're like, when you first start, you don't know what wires go where. You don't know what button does that. And every time I got a call like that, I took a class at the University of YouTube and I did my best. Another thing that nobody tells you is that if you wanna make any real money with vending machines, you need a lot of them. And you need to be in it for the long run. It was gonna take me about six months to one year just to make my investment back, which was about $7,000. But if you're in it for the long run, it's a nice business that maybe one day you could pass down to your kids so they could hate life. And those are the reasons I quit. It wasn't for me, you know, because I hated the slow return. I hated getting those text messages that a bag of chip got stuck and I didn't want to invest any more money into it. I had already invested $7,000 and that hurt. And at the end of it, I only made about $1,000 back. Now, what did I do with the machines? All the candy machines, I gave away for free right here in Hanford, California to all my fans. All the machines are clean, let's go give them away. Yo, what's up? Tomorrow, Saturday, I'm giving away all my candy machines to the youngsters tomorrow stay tuned because i'm gonna go live in hanford to tell you the location so you could come pick one up what about the full line machines well all four i sold them to a good friend of mine his name is tim and i let him do payments on it and i was so relieved when they were gone like i said it wasn't for me but that doesn't mean that you won't enjoy it. If you want to get into this business, follow my footsteps. Start small and use. If you like it, keep growing it. If you don't, hey, at least you tried and you could try something else. And like I said, if you want to see someone starting a vending machine business and growing it, check out my homie, The Young Entrepreneur. Link in the description below. Go show him some love. So I hope this video helped make your decision about the vending machine business. And remember, follow your dreams. Don't let the struggle stop you. Learn as much as possible. And one day, it's all gonna be worth it. I'll see you in my next video.